Well, just blowing past Wall Street expectations, Caterpillar earnings jumped 44 percent in Q3 on record revenue. Is this a sign that the global economy is back? Let's ask the CEO, uh, Doug Oberhelman, is with us now. Should we take this as a sign, Doug, that, that the global economy is not in as sour shape as, as many people believed it was? Well, the global economy is, uh, could be a lot healthier, and I'd sure like it to be, but we are not in the camp that uh, sees a double-dip recession in the United States or for, or for the world, for that matter, a global recession. It's a slow growth. It's spotty. In some areas, it's a little painful, but overall, it's a, it's a recovery from where we have been, and our news is pretty good. Record third quarter today, and we raised our outlook for 11, and we said for 2012 our top line will grow 10 to 20. So. We're just, we just don't see a hard landing around the world or a, or a double dip at the moment. As you just said, your, your projection for, for 2011 is top end of your guidance, $58 billion. You're projecting 10 to 20 percent higher than that for 2012. Um, what, what could uh, put a block to that? What could stop that? What are your biggest concerns? Is it Europe right now? Is it slowing growth in the United States? Or is it questions still about China and how the government is going to handle uh, the, the massive growth we've seen there? Yes, Bobby. It could be all three of those and, and maybe three others we can't even contemplate. What we're trying to do here is make sure we manage Caterpillar every day and, and get the most we can out of our business, which we're doing, I think, pretty well at the moment. What we can't see is what's happening out there, and certainly the European banking situation is one of those. Uh, that's the one probably the most short term that, that could give us something that's unintended we don't know about. I'm not so worried about a U.S. recession. I am worried about a very slow growth recovery that's painful for us here in this country. But I'm not, I, we just don't see a hard landing. China has slowed. In our industry, that's good news because we were boiling into a bubble that, that would have got, gotten out of control. But where, where they have gone, that, that is the Chinese authorities, to slow inflation has been good for our industry. It slowed it down, but it has allowed us to kind of reconsolidate and, and figure out long-term where we want to be because we still see China as tremendously favorable long-term for our company and our industry. Uh, uh, give me, Doug, on a scale of 1 to 10, where is your concern level right now about Europe? Oh, the Europe concern would be 5 to 7, somewhere in there. Certainly uh, uh, warmer rather than colder, but uh, it's been going on a while. They, they've been negotiating through that. I think the situation there is pretty well known. All the variables are on the table. I do think that the Europeans will end up solving it in some way that maybe not be elegant and ideal, but, but they'll get through it. And I think we've seen that come all, since summer when it started, really. Jobs, latest numbers show us you've got over 148,000 global employees, 83,000 of those now outside of the United States. It's a trend we see across the industry. We see it in, in GE. You go where the demand is. My question to you, are you going to be hiring significantly in certain pockets? If so, where is that going to be in the near term? Well, I hope we'll be hiring. With a 10 to 20 percent top line growth next year, we will be hiring. And if you look at where we have been adding employment the last, well, say since the recession ended early 2010, we've added 30,000 jobs around the world. And since that time, we've added 12,000 jobs in the United States, new plants, white-collar people, engineers, salespeople, accountants, you name it, 12,000 American jobs in the last 18 months or so. And we're pretty proud of that. As we grow out into next year and beyond, we'll be adding more jobs around the world, a lot of them right here in the United States. And, and we all feel good about that. Growing companies do that. They add jobs. That's why we need to grow. You've said recently, though, that, that Caterpillar has had a hard time finding uh, uh, employees with the skill set that you need to fill the different positions within the company. Is that still a significant problem for the company? Well, it's a problem in, in our country and our company to some degree, but here's an example for you. I, I was in Detroit, in Michigan, about six weeks ago. Our dealer there has 30 or 40 open requisitions today to fill because they can't get people that are trained to be service technicians. It takes a year or two to train them. They're doing those programs. But even in the state of Michigan today, and in our industry, there are open jobs. There's about 300 of those around the country. We, we get hundreds of applications, thousands of applications a year. We reject 60% of those for either lack of, tr lack of ability, drug testing, whatever it may be. That's a cost of society that's too high. We've got to be competitive 
in this country, and we've got to get those numbers up. And that's really the point I've been trying to make, that we've got to do better in, in preparing our people. We'll always have training programs inside Caterpillar. We've got to do it because we have very sophisticated machine tools and programs and design requirements. We'll always have those training programs. But we've got to have a better and higher level of skills available to us coming in, and we've just got to work on that in this country if we're going to be competitive long term.